intro me tonight is Mama K. Hey everyone. And tonight we are doing Drive Away Dolls, although the title might be something more naughty that I'm not going to say for now because we're we're still early on. Because yeah, uh-huh. Drive Away Dolls is the title is the title of this film. Oh right, because they yeah. do the little thing at the end there, and I've read a thing that that's like oh like you know, but Drive Away Dolls. Um, this is a Cohen brother movie, not a Cohen brothers movie, a singular right. a singular just Cohen, one. just just the one, just Ethan. Uh, Joel made the Macbeth movie by himself a couple years ago, which I did not see because it looked like a bit of a downer. And I heard it was very good, but a bit down. Did you see that one? Mm-mm. Did not. Mm. Maybe I'm burying the lead here. Everyone, everyone listening to this show would know <laughs> Coen Brothers. They know Big Lebowski. Right. They know no, no, cult, no Country for Old Men. They know... Are those the biggest Raising ones? Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. What What do you think of when you think of Coen Brothers? Like, where where do you go? I go right to Raising Arizona. That's the beginning. Like uh, Fargo. Mm. Um, that's, yeah. And there's, you know, what is that? Uh, the George Clooney one. There's a lot of George Clooney ones. Yeah, the, but the, like the more recent one. I can't think of what it is. But Inglorious Bastards. That's, no, that's, that's, uh, that's that not is... them. No, it's not. This is um, Quentin Tarantino is in Glory. He made, yeah. he made Ballad of Buster Scruggs, or they made, uh, what else did they make? There were more recent ones. What, oh my god, I should have this in front of me. I don't have Coen yeah. Brothers stuff right in front of me. I think but. of Big Lebowski, too, of course, because why wouldn't you? A Brother Where Art Thou, is that what you were thinking of? That's our early. Yeah, yeah. That's not recent. I guess though. that's not recent, though. 25 years no. ago, almost. 24. Yeah, that's not the one. I don't. No yeah. country. Inside Lewin Davis, True Grit. Oh, Serious Man. I forget. I always forget about Serious Man. Love Serious Man. I saw True Grit. Yeah. I actually didn't see True Grit. You know which one That's I saw no, recently? That doesn't seem like a Coen Brothers movie, though. No, it so. looks too. Well, they mostly lean into that humor, like that hu- that that um, Midwestern humor. Yeah. And it's very specific, and it's done very straight. And they, there's a couple of movies where they don't have that humor, and they're still good. Like, No Country for Old Men, not a lot of humor, but that's, like, one of their best. No. I think, I think after this and what I've heard about Macbeth, I think Ethan's the funny one and Joel is the serious one. And I and, I'm, I think so, too. And I think when they get together, they kind of balance each other out into a nice... Uh, Nice, nice combo blend, and then perhaps is separately. it a balance or does it feel like a, a? To me, it feels more when they're together. It feels more like a pairing, like they're um, maybe a pairing is better. Yeah, not a, a um. Yeah, you're getting two flavors at simultaneous, a salt and sweet, uh, kind of uh, flavor. Yeah. Uh, and you, yeah, and you and you want that. This is made they with. Kinda... It's still a partner though. Ethan Cohen made this with his with his wife, uh, Trisha Cook. Uh, who is? Oh, I didn't know that was his wife. Okay. Yes, his his uh, lesbian wife. Uh, they are uh, married, but she is openly gay and with a, another part. They both have had other partners in their twenty, thirty plus year marriage. So, Coen Brothers very strange lives they lead. They lived. They lived in a house. <laughs> they all lived together with Francis McDermott and a couple other people when they were starting out, and like Sam Raimi, and they, they just. Very free spirited artist types. Very I don't yeah. know, strange lives. Yeah. But uh, speaking of free spirited artist types, this is the plot of <laughs> Drive Away Dolls. In search of a fresh start, two women embark on an impromptu road trip to Tallahassee, Florida. However, things quickly go awry when the cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way. Pretty coney, if I ever heard a plot. 66% on Rotten Tomatoes with the critics, 36 with the audience, 6-1 on IMDb. So, mixed-ish. Uh, mm. If you haven't seen Drive Away Dolls, it's a scant 84 minutes. It's very short. It's yeah. under an hour and a half. Uh, and it is in theaters now, not streaming currently. So, if you have an interest, that's where you're going to go. And uh, I think that's all the... That's all the preamble That's we need. I can blue to start with, yeah. Margaret Qualley, Geraldine Visfani, Coleman Domingo, Pedro Pascal, Bill Camp, Matt Damon. Uh, recognizable names. A couple. Beanie Feldstein. Yeah. Don't want to bear the lead. Uh, so, spoil <laughs> now. Philadelphia, 1999 is where this is taking place. We start with a man named Santos. He comes into a bar, and he's got a briefcase, and he nervously leaves the bar, and then he is decapitated. He's decapitated, and that's how we start the movie. <laughs> Uh, elsewhere, we go to uh, we go to Jamie and oh, the main characters here. We got Jamie, we got mm-hmm. Marion, our main characters, 
uh, uh, two lesbians not together. They're just friends. Yep, they're friends. Yeah, Jamie's with Suki, who's uh, or was Beanie Feldstein's character, uh, and uh, and and. Why'd you say was? Is it what? was Beanie Feldstein's character? Jamie was with Suki. Beanie Feldstein's character. Oh, I thought you said Jamie is. No, was Beanie Feldstein's character. <laughs> no, no, she's and, and I'm saying <laughs> as if she died because she doesn't. We're yeah. spoilers. All but. of a sudden, we're <laughs> talking in the past. No, uh, was Beanie Feldstein is yes. the character is in the movie, but yes. was yes. the not presently in the they're breaking up at the beginning. Yes, of the, is, that is couple you, is breaking up. That couple is yeah. in a breakup. So. Oh my god! So the drive-away dolls. Uh, <laughs> they're the whole thing is they're going to take a road trip. The plot is a little tough. I'm not going to lie. It's it's a lot of convoluted little like people running around a briefcase that they shouldn't have. They get in possession of, and then they chase the briefcase. Right. So then we find out what's in the briefcase, and it's a fun little reveal. So it's like there's little criminals chasing around our lesbian not couple as. Jamie tries to get Marion laid again because she hasn't gotten laid since some breakup. We get some flashbacks to her childhood, I guess. Bumbling criminals, mm. uh, little goofy set pieces, psychedelic stuff going on. Yes. Um, so that is what's going on with Drive-Away Dolls. I don't want to get too detailed because it's honestly kind of difficult to. It's a little all over. Mama K, <laughs> Drive-Away Dolls. What do we think? Drive-Away Dolls. Um... Yeah, it's appealing at the time length that it is. However, the movie felt extremely long, even though it had these weird psychedelic segues that happened to try to, you know, push the narrative to the next, whatever was going to be happening in the next scene, uh, which I did not understand at all until the very end, which is the whole point of, you know, the reveal. But... um, this is a quirky movie. It's a funny movie. It's a, there is there, the Coen brothers or the Coen brother elements are in it. Like when you said, you know, our, our first character gets decapitated. And I realized that I giggled when you said that. I mean, what is funny about that? Um, it's hilarious <laughs> that he gets decap- uh, decapitated and the way that it happens is, is funny uh, in own, in a way that the Coen brothers do these kind of things. Um, and I think you're right. Ethan is the is the funny one. And even though things that are happening, this is a, you know, if this were to happen in real life, it would be horrifying and it would be very scary. But none of this is, you're not, none of that happens during this movie. This is just a, you know, funny, a funny little escape movie. And all the characters just happen to be super quirky um, and the main characters just happen to be lesbians and we just happen to have some really great, I had no idea Pedro Pascal was in this movie. So when I saw him first, I was very, you know, like that's kind of a little gem for me. And then Matt Damon shows up and, and then Miley Cyrus shows up. It's like, what's happening in this? A lot film? of little cameos so, in this. Yeah. Uh, Bill Camp, who plays, um. Oh, my boy. I love Bill Camp. Was Curly. Curly. Oh, Justice my gosh. for Curly. <laughs> Oh, kind of the best no ever, part no of this currently. movie. My favorite parts of this movie were actually the cameos. Like I, I was just really excited about seeing all of that. And I, I think I'm worried that that makes it not really great because if that's the best part, you know, that's kind of a bummer. Um, I have seen, I don't think I've seen anything that Margaret Qualley's done. Um, she does but just I know that, kind of stuff. She was in Once Upon a yeah. Time in Hollywood. Uh, Which TV. I never saw. Uh, I don't know. But she's, I have she's seen funny other... in this. She, she's it, like, I don't think... She's, I've seen her in other she's things funny, and she's, she's not She's overdone. Like yeah. She's over the top in this. She's and... a Cohen. She's being a Cohen. She did her homework. She said she she watched Fargo for six hours on loop and then, yeah. you know, or whatever, you know. It she's was doing a too much accent for me. The accent was too far and not it's texan it's very george bush <laughs> i find it george bush extra like george bush plus like i think that it's, I, watch I, think it's, I think it's over um but i it's i enjoyed the ride i think that it was it was nice that it was funny and quirky and just a little bit different than anything else that you're gonna see in the theater especially now there's like a darth for films there's nothing going on but 
even in general, I think it's just um, kind of like a nice little uh, little lanyap, a little a little savory bit. It's uh it's a it's like total mess, but it's so much more. It's just like a nice time. It's like it's a, like, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> no, it's like not a roller coaster ride. What am I like? Uh, it's like your. F- I think it's like if your funny friends made something mouse. on a weekend, like like if you're like if your funny smart friends were like we made this movie this weekend, and they made this is what they made. I'm like ah, it's f- right. I don't fucking understand what happened, but there's a lot of good jokes in there, a lot of funny little quips, and that's a right. and honestly, like I was what, watching this and thinking about it in tandem to the other movie we just the last one we just did, Flaming Hot, and I'm like wow, there's yeah. such opposites, and that Flaming Hot is such. A factory produced thing from tip to tail, every person all along the way, everything it has to say, inaccuracies and all, and it's its feeling of just a shell of an underdog story. Where this is a complete sloppy mess, makes no sense at all. It's like a, it's like a student film in its continuity and like trying to keep a narrative going and like keeping you invested and caring. Like it just doesn't care that it's like. The criminals are after him. Whatever. The criminals are funny. You watch them. They make. They go. Right. They, they see the lesbians. They They're giggle. not really scared of them at all. Yeah, so. Coleman Domingo. He's got. He's got the penises. It's gonna be hilarious. Like it's just. That's fine. Just write a bunch of sketches. And so that's what it is. It's like oh, right. these. That's what these, it is. It's a long SNL sketch. This really. Yeah. This really funny couple who is like a, a business couple. It appears in more ways than in in just uh, their marriage. Uh, primarily they they just had a fun time writing a little thing and it wasn't done and it wasn't ever going to be great and i guess so they were just like all right well we'll just make it as it is and uh you know what that's kind of enough sometimes i i i enjoyed this while recognizing it as a uh it's just not a good movie in almost any sense of like a movie <laughs> like like right. actually like like the it, it's the plot. No, the, there's there's no really high point. There's no low point. Let's just it's go just on a trip. We got to get you yeah. laid. Oh, we got to get that briefcase. Like, it's just like the elements of a store of stories in there. And like, but it, and it doesn't even seem like anyone takes that like seriously. It's all in the purpose of having a fun little scene where we say quippy things to each other. And a lot yeah. of those work. Like not all of them, not at the highest hit rate I've seen from a Cohen a Cohen thing, but high enough. No, like not. Yeah, definitely not I low. Agree. Not an, I've seen uh, not too many Cohen Brothers movies where I would say I didn't have any fun with that. Even um, what were the most recent ones? Like Hail Caesar is a great example. Boring ass movie, not interesting at all. But there's a Ray Fine scene with Alden Ehrenreich where he's trying to get him to pronounce a sentence right, and he can't do it right, because Alden Ehrenreich's the bumbling character, and Ray Fiennes is the refined character. So he's trying to get him to say it, and he can't do it. And that whole movie sucks, but I always think about that little scene. And <laughs> a lot of their movies, like, like little quippy things. And so they get in this, I, I try to write some down, some of their fun little quippy things. One of them says per se in a funny way. Oh, uh... The the uh, she brings back a girl and and uh, Jamie brings back a girl. Marion's sleeping in the in the hotel, and he goes like, "Oh, mm-hmm. is this gonna be a threesome?" And she's like, "No, no, oh, oh, rats! Like just such <laughs> rats, <laughs> just like such like a little right. like mm. it's just so aw shucksy that it's so contagiously likable. Uh, a lot of blue, a lot it of is. blue bayou in this, which was interesting. Uh, I I don't know why. I, so much I was bayou. trying to figure out what that. But the deal with that was too, because yeah, there's the big scene where they they somehow meet up with the college, uh, um, the female college soccer team, and they're in they're having yep. a basement party, which I've never heard of a basement party before. Like that's yeah, what this I is. have I have uh, no lesbians close to me in my life, unfortunately, so I cannot uh... <laughs> to be like, is this is this accurate? Is this a real thing? No. So we have, we have the, options for the, gay friends, but uh, le- we're we're short but, on lesbians in our in our circle. We need to uh, get a recruit. <laughs> well, imagine we're films with the women. We could really use that. It's so true. If we there's are, one out we are, there that wants to apply, we are bereft of women open. seeking women. So we need. <laughs> there are places you can go for that. Just saying. Um, yeah, that's. 
that's that part that scene with with that happening and and i didn't they and they be well i'm gonna spoil it but they become a couple at the end right i mean it's yeah. a little loose but i would say um, they do i mean i guess it's the i guess it's them falling in love but like it is them falling in love, but, but I don't really like, trust the main character at all. I don't trust Jamie that she's gonna that she's gonna be faithful because she's a she's a whore. Like she's definitely ooh, she starts well, off some hard harsh hard words there. <laughs> well, she she's a okay. Whore. What what's another? Okay, maybe a whore is not the right word. She's uh she's loose. She's she cheats on her girlfriends all the time. So a yeah, whore is monetary. Like, God, I don't know. I just. Uh, connotations oh you're saying uh, okay that's not how i i don't find jamie i way, don't find jamie but... villainous at all i guess at any point i, I find her very golden sure retrievery. she is because she cheated on beanie she she's a villain no i understand i understand that but i only i only can look at them as cartoon characters it's hard for me to digest their feelings and be like i feel bad for beanie feldstein i'm watching beanie feldstein having a meltdown and it's funny because Beanie Feldstein's good, and she's like right. doing she's doing her work well. But like, it's not like I don't feel like Jamie is this complex thing that's hurting her, and like, like I don't think about no, I don't think about I wa- it at all. Like, I want better for what's the girl's name? Miranda, not Miranda. What's um the other girl's name? Marion, the straight yes. the straight woman. Mary, yeah, I feel bad for her. I don't want her to get. I don't want her to be with Jamie and Jamie to be that way. So that was the only thing when it was ending. I was all like, oh, I don't. She's gonna get hurt by Jamie, and I don't want that to happen. Yeah, maybe, but, I guess that's but like not we end up. Marion needs to. It's also Marion needs to learn to loosen up, kind of movie. So maybe she needs to get be it is broken up by Jamie or whatever. Whatever is gonna happen to them in the in the later on, and that's yeah, the thing. It's like, I don't, we don't think even... she needs that, but you can go ahead and say that. It was all no, for me like a no, mileage of that. of enjoying the banter, enjoying Jamie and yes, Marion playing I agree off with each that. other, enjoying Suki with her couple of scenes with the cops. The cops are good when they go with the with the girls at the slumber party, and the the one the <laughs> one cop who is is he got internalized internalized gay things. Is that why he shoots his partner and Coleman Domingo in that one scene? Is that what we're supposed to believe? Is that like, I think so. It's okay, man. I was just, like, you're just experimenting. No, no, I'm not experimenting. I didn't you or anything. You know? like, and he shoots him. Oh, I, I, holy shit. I'm like, it's a fun deal. I didn't like, expect any of that. No, none of it. It's a, it's a perfect Coen brothers deus ex machina because like, right. it's crazy, but just plausible and mid Midwesterny enough to get away with it. Uh, I, I forgot. <laughs> The reveal, there, there's only one real reveal, and that's, like, the briefcase. We're going through the briefcase, MacGuffin yeah. chasing, and we're th- I, I'm thinking it's Pulp Fiction briefcase. I think it's, like, oh, it's a, a light. Like, there's nothing in there. Like, I didn't, I didn't really even think about it. Uh, no, that's not the truth at all. The, the briefcase has Matt Damon's penis, as well as some other penises. It's got a bunch of very powerful men's dildo, uh, uh, their right. penis mold shaped. And that's, like, some sort of power thing they get off to have it at and then they shove it, whatever, you know, it's the power thing. Yeah, and so, but, yeah, <laughs> when that was actually the most ridiculous part of this movie, honestly, I was just like, that's not it for me. Sorry. You didn't like, did you like the reveal scene? At least the reveal scene for me was fun. I guess. Cause they, it's just after they hook up. Like it, I do love their hookup scene because it's J- JB basically takes Marion out. It's the the the, the subplot oh, is Marion yeah. hasn't gotten laid. Jamie's gonna get married late because like you gotta get laid with someone you trust. Blah blah blah. It's that classic thing. I'm your friend, so you trust me. Yeah. All that. So she she so she cheats her out, passes out immediately, falls asleep immediately. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> that real. So real. It's just like just <laughs> so like it's been years, and then she's like, oh, this is a special thing. <laughs> Right. As I and was then, like, yeah. I was like, of course, Jamie knows what she's fucking doing. Jamie, pro, old, old pro. And then wait, and then when you get the wake up scene, you get the you out, get the yeah. fun suitcase reveal. And it gave me for me. I, I kind of agree with you. It, for a ninety minute movie, it does drag a little bit just because it's so all over yeah. the place. But that gave it the juice it needed to get the last twenty minutes out for me. Yeah, I suppose. Um, it just it's it just seems so. I don't know. I, I think I audibly that, said, I said, oh my god. Lesbians are gonna, I think I said, oh my god. Lesbians they're, are they're... gonna wind up with a suitcase full of dildos. Just seems like, okay. <laughs> no, that's what I said in the video. I'm like, oh my god. The plot of this movie is they stole Coleman Domingo's yeah. dildos. I'm like, this is crazy. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't know. I, like, I didn't realize it's the movie I was watching. It's it's slight. It's fluffy, but it's I don't know. I thought it was... What did you think about the what did you think about the psychedelic like you know segue Interludes? scenes? Inter is that what they were? I don't know. It's it's yeah. uh I, I I read letterbox reviews from time to time because I like the quippy ones, and one of the best ones I saw was the best ones are just like the one word or one sentence ones, and this is just the big le- the big Lesbowski. Just like it's just that it's just like that one scene in it when he's I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in that same exact thing. <laughs> it's that it's just like a you know you got to interlude a scene you got to cut between things but you want to keep the theme flowing you want to keep the ideas flowing and that's tying it to the penises with Matt Damon I suppose that's why we have the Miley Cyrus yeah. uh, scenes so. Yeah. It's just like, okay, but, our sketch, we just had three sketch scenes in a row, and now our characters are in new weird places. We have to organically keep the viewer understanding what's going on. So, you know. it's such a cheat, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't, I, I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was being like spoon fed something that wasn't working for me. So, I was, every time it things, happened, I got more and more annoyed. What we Wait give a, a pass, what we consider a cheat, because you call that a, a cheat, and we just got over uh, Flame and Hot, where I called a bunch of things, and they're cheats because of their the way they uh, structure things. It's just interesting what the different things we'll call a cheat <laughs> in the movie. Well, yeah, and and the the perspective because I don't, you know, that's for me that's a cheat that didn't work, and sometimes there are cheats that work for certain people, and they don't work for other people, and this is just one where I was like. Oh, I kind of feel like you could do something better with this. I mean, I under it did come to something at the end, but there were other things you could have done. And why Miley Cyrus? And I don't think did she get credited for this? I, I was uh, like, I believe it says did... uncredited here. But um... oh, okay, yeah, it was why weird because I didn't anything, even though? recognize like, her. She probably is friends with somebody. She's friends with somebody, you know, either Cohen, yeah. the writer, one of the actors, somebody. So, well, if she did it right, she could have maybe got an Oscar nom for you know a song if she was going to sing something. So this saying. is 2024. Now this was a this is actually another one too that it wasn't supposed to be. You could look right. at the scores and the box office and be like, oh, this is a cynical. They fucked up. They dumped it in February because they didn't believe in it. No, this was a this is a casualty of the writers' uh, actor strike. The writer strike. Yeah. This, yeah. So this this one was supposed to come out in I think like October or something, and it got pushed. So. Not a. Well, not... I'm glad it did get pushed because there's yeah. just nothing else to watch. So no, it was, it was like this we could have was... done the Bob Marley film. It could have been a lot worse. I saw Madam Wit. <laughs> did you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Save that for the catch-up show next time we do. If I can. Okay, your brother saw that, so. Madam Web, yeah. there is. Oof. There's just. Wow. <laughs> I just like it's. It's just like crit. Like what. You just really, Madam. Show. You look at a movie like when you watch a movie like Madam Web. You're like, I don't think anyone's in charge of anything. I like you. <laughs> the, the, it's one of those like House of Cards movies where you're like, not House of Cards, the TV show. House of Cards where you're like, right. It's all a House of Cards. No one's in charge of anything. There's no. <laughs> you go to the grocery store. There's a miracle. There's food there every time you walk in those doors. Like nothing should work. You, you're like, if the right. world was run like Madam Web, we would be in the dark ages by by lunchtime. Like it's just. Anyway, as it is, I don't know how the world exists, so I can't imagine that you know a world like that. Look, I know we are yeah. pretty short on time. I don't have a ton to say yeah. on Driveway Dolls. I like I I love seeing Bill. It felt like a greatest hits movie, kind of like oh, I recognize these things, these beats, but they're played in this yeah. weird order where it's not a cohesive narrative. It's more of just like. Oh, I I recognize these types of characters. I recognize these 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 folksy, these folksy quippy, uh, uh, ne'er do wells. I I and I and I, I get it. And honestly, yeah. I had a, I had a nice time with them. It was a, a hour and a half after work, and you know, there's empty theater, totally empty. It was a Wednesday. Oh still, no! It's the first week. It's <laughs> out, totally empty, completely. Yeah. It, it to, to to its. To be fair, this is a theater I go to that has, it's the lowest, no one's ever there. I don't know why this theater, no oh, one's ever there, okay. but uh, no one's ever there, so it's, it's not. I, yeah, I think there might have been two people in the theater. Again, it was, it, for us too, it was an after work kind of thing, and uh, there might have been a couple people. Do you want to talk about the title? 
Uh, yeah, so the real, not the real, but, like, when the movie ends, there's, like, a little sign that pulls away, and instead of saying Drive Away Dolls, it says, Henry James, Drive Away Dykes. Right. <laughs> there is, Henry James is a common thread through this that I appreciate. Like, it's, when there's something that I can watch walk through the movie, I appreciate that. So, it went all the way to the end. Do I am I missing why is it called Henry James that drive away dykes? Uh you there was a Henry James thread through the film. She was reading uh the main character was reading Henry James and I I think I can't remember which Henry James it was. And then someone else that she met was also reading Henry James. Oh, uh, so just like as in... a joke, they like credit yeah. it to him. I see. It would it would yeah, be like I don't saying believe Ernest that there's Hemingway's a Henry James drive blah, away. blah 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 because the yes. characters are Ernest Hemingway obsessed or something. Yes. Gotcha. And this is the Henry. J- this is their version of a Henry James novel. This gotcha. movie is their version of that. Okay. So. Yeah. That would have landed oh, much yeah, better that's... with me if uh, I got the joke. But you know what? If I bet that the people. Who you knew it did, did, did that joke work for you did you like that like oh look at that i did yeah i like when that thread going through much better than i like like the whole segue thread that was happening well, look at film. that so that worked for you then i appreciate that i appreciated that yeah i think there's me. Uh, a lot of things worked for me in this like you said in little vignettes and little snippets um as a film it's just a wreck so no uh, i i think they kind of figured they were like we don't have to do we not have to care? Like we don't have to actually make a real movie. We could just we could just release a rough draft. It really feels like Imagine we could that. we can just not actually finish this. Like we could just like it doesn't really make yeah. sense, but it is funny still. Like we did laugh. Like I'm still laughing at this scene. And like hey, look those tri- like the head cutting scene. It's still the scene we wanted to make. And when they're screaming too long, like that's something we would do. Like they're just like you know what? <laughs> Let's just release it as it is. Let's just it's at, at eighty minutes long. We're not, we don't have to reshoot anything. Just just let it just put it out there. You know what? Just put it out there. And imagine being able to do that. Imagine being at the point in your career. I, it takes with, forty like, years of being the best. That's all it takes. Is being forty years of being a yeah, but top even then, fifty you really, human being you, on the planet at your at your craft. And then, then but you there can are do certain <laughs> there are certain people who would never do that. Like there would that's that's a compromise that certain filmmakers would never ever make. You know? So no, like I. Like it, like Tarantino would never make anything that's right. not exactly that's actually the first one I was thinking his of too. thing. Like a cra- so. but then look at Soderbergh. How many Soderbergh movies have you done? He's making four movies that's right true. now. Like he's he's yeah. like I bet he has They're like going to be absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I mean, honestly, the, the, what I like about Soderbergh is that even though we we rag on some of the things, he makes consistently. He always tries. He just goes so hard all the time. Makes so many things. <laughs> I know, but sometimes it's such a miss. But yeah. I picture him at home. He's got like a four. It's like the four corners of the states. He's got four stu- four different sets, and he's just like, <laughs> in, like he's in a swivel chair, and he just he's just swiveling right. between the different sets all day long because he just can't. <laughs> he's like, I gotta, I gotta. He can't make- just do one thing. No, he's he's got to make two. He's got two more coming out this year. Two, he, like I, I, I'm like, oh, I hope, I hope. Wait, Sanders- did he already have something come out this year? I don't think anything's come out yet, but I'll. We'll, oh, okay. He's post production stuff. Yeah, I, I know he has. He has because I saw he had a streaming one coming out, but then I saw he also had another. Yeah, you know him; he's always going. But uh, yeah. we're we're dancing all around driveway dolls. I don't have any more. Do you have any more <laughs> driveway dolls? I don't think so. Um, Do you recommend it though? I mean, I like the getaway story. I like the the fact that you know. There, here it is, almost Y two K, and here's these two lesbians driving to Florida of all places. Like, okay, I was gonna yeah. ask you this slightly unrelated. Do you think we're gonna keep leaning on pre two thousand like six so that we don't have to have cell phones and stories because cell phones destroy mm. stories? I was reading something about that actually, and in in it was because of this movie that that's that that topic came up. I've been thinking about that, like, there's no, it's not, this is, to my estimate, only set in the 90s for convenience. Like, 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 just, I I think about, like. Maybe, but. 
maybe campiness a little bit. This isn't something that you're going to want to throw into 2020 and you know what I mean? I feel I like this, if they wanted to, be to a little do more the, serious. the throwback, they could have gone back. This feels like a, like a 70s movie, honestly, like the way it actually, it feels more like, like a, like a 70s time, like maybe 90s, but it's too, um. Maybe, but there wouldn't be the acceptance of like lesbians. I around. forgot about that. Like that yeah. wouldn't be a thing. So, yeah, you're right. 90s. You know, the 70s was sense. not. Yeah. The 90s. I, was, I mean, the 70s yeah. For lesbians. That's a good point. I mean, why are they even are movies even true to life now if people are not even doing anything but being on their phones? Like, is that what we need to see next? You know what I mean? I, I've, like, I've thought about this. And like, are we in po- and like so many movies now, like continue to be re- like not just remakes, but like continuations of old of the old things. Yeah. Like, are we at post? Are we at the end? Are we? Do we do we have to do <laughs> we have it? to? We got to blow it all up and restart. I have been thinking about that recently. If we've got it too good now, and now it's kind of done, <laughs> like there's no, we said it all. We said all we're capable of saying. We don't have any fresh. Well, freshness. yeah, and everything's a retread unless you're. I mean, unless the thing is, it's a retread unless you're commenting on some on like something social that's happening in in life. I think about right? that when I go. I do. I get in those phases when I go on a bad stretch of movies or and like we watch you know what nicole watches we have to watch crap like if i like my diet of things i watch <laughs> and then like TV. and then i got the social medias like this i and I, the really the only place i get information that i find enjoyable and not horrible is my podcasts and even them a lot of them are just yeah. regular people too just trying to digest world and it's uh right it's it's the best time yeah. ever and yet when it's the best time that means it's like well can't be the best time Something's forever right happen. yeah like yeah it's like it's like, it's it's like just we can't uh we can't not shoe drop that's all we can do is wait for shoes to drop it's quiet too quiet that's all we can do yeah you just gotta live your life though man and podcasts are just that's that's the novel of today so that's the henry james of today they're so wonderful if everyone can get out their that. voices and gets in the, the, the barrier to entry is nothing you know yeah, that's great and also terrible. I think it's mostly great. I'm pro, I'm pro democratization <laughs> of information and, and whatever. Yeah, uh, I I feel that way too. But you know, I want I wish everyone could be a god in their own little universe. That really is my is my wish is that we could all plug into our own little universes and and and, and god over our own worlds. I think you're supposed to. So. Mm. And that doesn't mean godding over other people because everybody has to have their own universe. So you can't. Yeah, but you get to that. the point where you make your own little universe and you make fake other people to lord over kind of thing. <laughs> I you have to. There has to be. You have to be. You have to feel a superiority to another thing. Otherwise, like that's. If you don't, that's really the, if you don't feel like you're doing better than someone else, I'm like, well, then what are you even doing? Like, if you, if you had everything you ever wanted and someone had more than you, well, then you're a loser. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, man. I don't think that at all, but. Do you recommend drive away dolls? I don't either, I think, for the, for the record, <laughs> but. For the record. Do I recommend? Yeah, I do. I think that it's uh, quirky enough, different enough. Don't think of it as a film. It's a movie. And yeah, if go for it. Pedro Pascal, he can do no wrong. Not yet. Hopefully that remains. But uh, no. yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, it's you go out with your friends. It's a Cohen brother. They're a little older. It's not the best conversation you have with your friends, but you know, it's a still, it's, there's, there's still them and, and that's enough, you know, and that's what this is. You'd, <laughs> It's not the best conversation you ever had. It's it's a lot like the other conversations you guys have had, but it also makes you remember why you liked him in the first place. So, hang out so with you're drive- a yes, yeah, hang out with driveway dolls. It's it's a crap movie, okay. but it's a it's an enjoy. It's so much more enjoyable than what would we do? Flame and hot, flame and hot. Much better technical movie in executing basic understanding of things. Horribly boring, not interesting. No one wants to look at that. <laughs> I'd much rather watch Drive Away Dolls. And Drive Away Dolls has stretches of boring, and a movie yeah. that's 84 minutes shouldn't really have stretches of anything. It should not be. It should not. Stretch should not be in the world. And it, it does that, but it's, it's just because it's sloppy and it doesn't care. But it's funny. 
it's a, it's a funny sloppy mess. So at yeah. least I laughed organically and felt like a person and not like some sort of creature. So driveway else recommends <laughs> two recommends. Um, two recommends. any other? I think all sorts have come out since you've heard this. Not that uh, we we wouldn't know that. Congrats to the winners. We wouldn't know that, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, good job, Oppenheimer, I'm sure it was great. for winning all those things. I cannot believe <laughs> just how many uh, things Poor Things did not win. I thought Poor Things was going to do great, but uh, they were really they were really snubbed. And uh, congratulations. I can't believe that Best Song went to Flaming I was Hot. just about to do that joke. But <laughs> fine. I, got, I beat you to it. You, you beat me to the I win that joke. one in the little world that we just created. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. That's, we're gonna we're gonna cut it off there. If we're gonna, we're gonna uh, there. Uh, recommend things. Uh, go to us. Things to recommend to us. Comments. Yes. Reviews. Movies to watch. We actually are gonna do a listener suggestion coming up. I forgot to say that. Bottoms. We're gonna do bottoms soon. That was a listener oh, suggestion. Oh, great! I got it from a couple people actually. More than one. I'll I'll, I'll shout you out. But I I did not awesome. forget about it. The people who sent them out, it just, I had wanted to do it. It just hadn't been streaming, and now it is. So we're going to get to Bottoms in March. So Cool. Uh, Films with the Moment of My Life on Facebook. Reach out to me on Instagram, Brennan underscore Podhost. And you can email the show, filmswiththewomen at gmail.com. All right, Mama Kay. Thanks for being on Drive Away Dolls. As Henry James would say, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Till next time, this is Brennan signing off saying thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Films with the Women in My Life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, please rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Keep up with the latest from the show on Instagram at Brennan underscore Podhost, on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life, and on Twitter at Films Women Pod. Finally, you can email the show with questions and suggestions at filmswiththewomen at gmail.com. Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke and Chris Iwanek. Original artwork created by Nicole D'Alessio. This show is produced by Brennan Snyder. Thank you again for listening and enjoy your movies.